Welcome to the Daily Update. This is Being Prepared Wednesday, July 13th, where we'll look at the action in the market today and then see how things look for Thursday, July 14th. And we had the big report come out, CPI. It was stronger than expected. The markets initially tanked. They tried to recover, but ended up being down on the day. However, some of our sector rotation charts are still showing some movement into the growth area. So maybe that's what's happening under the surface. We're seeing the smart money going into those sectors. And then when the time is right, perhaps the market may go higher. Doesn't look like it's going to go higher right now, but maybe they're setting things up. When I get to that chart, I'll kind of break it down a little bit more just to show you what I think I'm seeing here. So just remember that I have a temporary email address right now. It's spxinvesting at gmail.com. And there will be no video on Wednesday, July 20th. Okay, so let's go back and talk about what happened on Wednesday. At the open, we did have a gap lower to below S1, and we shot all the way down to S2. S1 was at 3790. S2 was at 3760. We didn't really get down to S3. I've tried to calculate that the last few days, but it's so far that a lot of times it just doesn't really apply to any intraday session. After retesting the low, so we came down, hit the low, went back up, came back down. We actually moved prices back up to the unchanged level, which again, that acts in this case as a resistance level. If we're going up and coming down, it acts as a support level. Well, it hit that resistance and we did go positive a little bit later in the day, but not much. Then as the day went on, we fell back, prices rebounded, and then that's when they went positive to the daily pivot, which was at 38.32, because we were below the daily pivot, that acted as resistance. Prices then chopped around for a while between positive and negative. And then going into the close, we saw some selling. We ended up being down 0.45%, which is a lot less than what we were down right after the open. Volume was below average, which seems to be the norm now. The technicals, they're switching back more towards negative. Our oscillators are still positive, but a few of the shorter term ones, they're starting to roll over. We're not really near anything other than the 20 period moving average. And we're even dropping below that right now. And I'll show you that. <clears throat> Inflation and interest rates and growth concerns, those are the big issues. And they will continue to be the issues for quite a while now until it appears that inflation is under control or until, well, about that time, you might have the Fed do a pivot. Right now, their stance is we're going to keep raising interest rates until we don't see inflation as being a problem anymore. When that stops, then the market should find a base, at least, and feel better about things. And then we'll see how things go after that. We also have a whole list of geopolitical concerns, especially Russia, Ukraine, things going on in China with the supply chain. All of those are feeding into this whole scenario that we're dealing with. Earnings, we're starting to see some big companies come out with earnings now. So that could impact not only the individual stocks, but their sectors that they're in. And sometimes that can bleed over into the indexes themselves. And we're still battling back and forth. Are we gonna go into a recession? Are we in one now? Are we gonna be going into one in the future? What's gonna happen with all that? So some comments is the sector rotation that we're seeing, it continues to improve. And I'll show you the charts to back that up. We will be getting the PPI on Thursday. Now the CPI is the big one, that's for consumers. PPI is for producers, the people that make the things. So we want to keep an eye on that. And that can be a real influential report as well. The ADX is still below 20. So we're in more of a trendless environment. The 10 and the 5 and the 10 and the 2 continue to be inverted with the yield curve. Fear, we're starting to drop back in to being very close to extreme fear. Then we had CPI, which is released, and I have some additional charts that I usually show when this comes out. It increased 1.3% on a month-over-month -month basis. That's quite a bet. They expected it to be 1.1. So it came in stronger than expected, and that freaked out the markets. 
I don't know what would have happened if we'd come in and expected because that's still very high. And then the core CPI, which takes out food and energy, the things that we really have to have, it increased 0.7. Again, a little bit stronger than expected. They expected it to be at 0.6. So on a year over year basis, the total CPI, it's up 9.1%. That's pretty hefty. That's more than what we've seen in a long time where it was 8.6 in May and the core which was up 5.9% versus the 6%. It actually ticked down a little bit, but not really enough to make the markets happy. The bounce that we saw, well, I'll, I'll wait and go over that when we, when we get to that part. The weekly mortgage applications were down 1.7%. We're non-trending right now. The bias is negative since we're going down and the momentum is negative. So let's look at sentiment. We're dripping back into the extreme fear tank now. So again, we, we could stay camped out here for a long time. We've been below this for most of the spring and into the summer. And so we're not getting that v shape critical mass, everybody freak out type of thing. People are just coming down here and not being happy and then just staying unhappy. Here are the charts from Shadow Stats, and you can go to their site. This is freely available. I don't have a subscription to them or anything. You can go and look at this yourself, where the orange yellow line, red and yellow together, which is orange, it's showing that now we're up over 9% with the CPI. Now, according to what how they calculate things, based on how they did it back in 1990, we're up around 12 or so, 11 or 12%. You don't get real exact numbers with this chart. Now, if we go back to how it was calculated in 1980, yeah, we're up around 16, 17, maybe you could, well, maybe not 18%, but this blue line is what inflation would be if we still calculated the CPI how we did back in 1980. So it's pretty high. And that's what's, this is the reality. Of, of probably what you're facing when you go buy food, when you buy gas, when you're looking at rent, when you're looking at pretty much anything right now, the blue line is probably more to what you're seeing. Now, let's go through some other Isabel net charts, the cyclicals. Now, these, they cycle, okay? They go up when we're having a strong economy. They go down when we're having a weaker economy, and they've underperformed. Duh, we've been in a pretty weak economy now amid rising concern about a recession happening. So this is the indexed return of cyclicals against defensive. Defensive, again, are more the value plays, the ones that tend to do better when the market is going down. And so that's what people get into. And this dark blue line just shows how they've been really underperforming. Where here, we have the ISM manufacturing. That came out, what, a little over a week ago. And it just shows how these two tend to move more hand in hand with them both declining right now. Okay, then here's the arithmetic. And you could try to be all scientific and say arithmetic. But now it's arithmetic, folks. I've heard some people mispronounce this. The average annual return of the S&P over different periods. This is just kind of, of a shot in the dark to me where you can just pick a beginning, pick an end, and then come up with what would the return be during that time, where for all of you listening to this video, it's going to be different because you have different investments and you have different time horizons. But I'm not going to go through this. This just shows, again, starting, let's say, at 1928 and then going through 2021 and then some other different time periods as well. I don't know how useful that chart is. Then we have discretionary, not the sector. These are people that can pick and choose their investments. That's the green. And they're seeing some real troubles right now against the systematic strategies. These are the folks that sit down and write out a plan, and then they don't deviate from that plan. And it shows how they're really having some trouble as well. And I brought a chart up that pretty much showed the same thing a week or so ago. This is showing that bonds don't hedge equities in an inflationary world. This is just showing bonds and stocks now starting to move together. And that could be kind of healthy, especially if inflation starts to get under control. 
So we have the US bond and equity correlation, and this is a 20, 24 month period where they do move in tandem from time to time. And so if bonds can start going up because they see inflation not being as bad, that could start to help stocks. This is a look at Germany, and you go all the way back to 1991. Of course, the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, and then they went through a lot of changes. They went through reunification of taking West Germany and East Germany and putting them back together. This just shows their trade balance, and it's actually going negative right now. So these are some problems that they're seeing in Europe. Because if you take the EU, Germany has the biggest and most robust economy of all the EU countries. And so if Germany's having trouble, that's also bleeding through to the other EU nations. This, this is the, um, I have to look up the acronym here. They had a global supply chain pressure index. And it confirms that supply chain issues are easing a little bit, where we're coming back down here. That doesn't look like easing to me. I guess, oh, this is the pressure is coming off of this. So it's the, the pressure is starting to come down. And here is against the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, and it's starting to come down. And then down below, we have the PPI, the Producer Price Index, which we'll get on Thursday. It's also starting to show a little bit of a decrease in pressure. So that could help things economically. The market cycle indicators, and it shows them falling. These are just the bullish signals are really starting to drop off. When we get to a real dangerous place, that's when we're down in the gray area, but we're not at that level yet. This is the cumulative flows into the different regions where the US, of course, most people get into the US market. That's the biggest stock market. This lighter blue line is Europe, and it's having some trouble. The gray line is emerging markets and the dark blue line is Asia. So we also had a different reading come out with the Rydex bear bull ratio showing that folks are not extremely bearish, but they're certainly not bullish right now. But compared to where it was for a long time, you had most folks in the bullish funds, but everything changed in 2022 and so now folks are having to switch back and forth between the different mutual funds. And the program that I have, this is how it started. We didn't really have robust ETFs to choose from at that time. So we used mutual funds. And Ridex has both enhanced and inverse mutual funds that you can use. And a lot of people still use those. And they have two cutoff times. They have a morning cutoff. And then right before the close, they have a cutoff time where you can switch things around. Then here is the VIX showing how we actually decreased a little bit on a closing basis. And the bar showed how that we closed down closer to the bottom of the bar. The VIX of the VIX did spike up. Volatility is starting to pick up as we continue to drop. The ulcer index is still showing that there's not an awful lot of fear, even though this is starting to turn back up. Again, if you've been watching all these videos, the weekly chart still has this as a very high reading, showing that there's a lot of fear on a longer term basis. We're down 21.10% from the all time high. Here's the equity put call ratio, which it did advance with a down day. And we're starting to turn back up with the five period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio. Support and resistance here are the support levels and resistance levels for Thursday's session. And here's the daily chart showing how we're breaking down below the pivot level. And I guess we could have some support at the previous low. And if we fall, th fall through that, if we continue to fall, we might go to the low set back in June. And then we have some support levels down below that. If we start to turn and go back up, we're gonna have some overhead resistance to deal with as well. Here's the machine gun chart showing how we're starting to break below this longer term support again. We got back above that and that was pretty positive, but we didn't stay up there. Then we fell back down. We got back above it again, only to fall back down. So we're, we're kind of right at that level with a, being a little bit below it right now. Here's a little bit cleaner chart showing how we're starting to break down below this longer term support. 
Here are the daily pivots for July, showing that we're now down below the pivot. We were able to get above it according to the DeMarc pivot points, but now we're breaking down below that. Here's Fibonacci also showing kind of what I was already saying. These are two different Fibonacci levels. We're starting to come back down from that level right now. And a weekly chart, we're still staying a little bit below the 38.2% retracement. We had been staying above that, but the last day or two has been dropping below. Our different sectors, the sector that, and since we had a down day, the ones that were the weakest, we had industrials down over a percent. We had two different sectors being up, staples and discretionary. That's kind of weird because they're kind of opposite of each other with discretionary actually doing the best. And that's what's helping some of our sector rotation. We're having a pretty solid down day, but we're seeing some strength in discretionary. Here's the scooter report lately, just showing that utilities, staples, and energy are all in the 90%. I say 90%, it should be a 90 range. This is more like a score, where the discretionary and communication are the weakest down here at the bottom. The sectors still just show that energy is doing the best, even though it's given up, my gosh, has it given up half of its gains from the high? Where utilities are just barely positive, but all the other sectors are now negative and have been negative for pretty much the whole year. This is showing how the Dow is holding up the best, going back to the all-time high. The pink one is the S&P 500, and then we have the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ having the most difficulty. Technical alerts, pretty much all red until you get to the end of the day where the NASDAQ was bumping around. We did have the S&P drop below 3,800. That's really the only signal that we see here. And then later on, we had the NASDAQ come back above 11.3. It actually, it kind of outperformed. And I'll, I'll show some charts to back that up here. These are the futures and they were pretty quiet overnight because we had the CPI coming out and a lot of anticipation about that. Right here where this thing spiked up, that was right before the report was released. There was a lot of buying coming in thinking that what I had said in yesterday's video, maybe it's a sell the rumor, buy the news type of thing. Well, they might've been trying to get positioned at that time. Well, right here's when the report came out. After we took this big dump down, we did try to come back up and improve. And then we ended up opening in New York with a gap lower. Here's S1. Down here, we came almost all the way down to S2. Then we bounced back up, went almost up to the unchanged level. We, we did hit unchanged, but only briefly. Came back down. Then we went up positive for a little while, came up to the pivot. That acted as, as resistance. Then we kind of went down a little bit, back up a little bit, and then we saw some selling going into the close. So our trend, it's still slightly neutral right now. We're at 19.72. So if this starts to turn back up as the red line is turning up, then the ADX might kick back into gear. If we go into having a positive day or two, this ADX is likely to fall right now as it readjusts. Breath, we saw a decline based on price and volume. Not a surprise there. The advanced decline ratio also turning more negative than it had been. New highs, new lows, they've now switched over to negative. On the five period and the 10 period, they are rolling over. Accumulation distribution, it actually ticked up a little bit. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Usually what happens with indicators like this is if we have a down day, everything is attributed to down. If we have an up day, everything is attributed to up. Well, this one is picking up at least a little bit positive signals with the volume. Short term, the decision point, they changed their short term trend model back to down where it had switched up. And here we are with the 20 period moving average. We're dropping below both of them, both the simple and the exponential. And we're right below the exponential moving average right now. I'm sorry, the simple moving, no. Yeah, the simple moving average. And we're way at the bottom of the tree here. If we have another down to sideways day, I probably won't show this chart for a while. And I probably won't show this one either. We're starting to drop down below the rainbow with the short term 
rainbow moving averages. Stoke RSI is really declining now, as is the Williams Percentar. Force index, it dropped a little bit. And the Swinland trading oscillator is also declining based on price and volume. McClellan oscillator is now negative. We're moving lower with the 20, 50, and 200 period moving averages. Stochastics, short term lower, intermediate term lower, and we're rolling over with the longer term stochastics. We're now dropping below the anchored moving average from the whole COVID low. That had provided a little bit of support, but the markets don't seem to care about that right now. Here's the PMO. Still positive, but could be starting to roll over in itself, where we are rolling over based on price and volume, but we haven't quite switched to negative. You could maybe say we've switched negative with the volume. The PMOs that are rising, they're declining. The buy signals are rolling over and we're starting to roll over with the PMOs that are above zero. Chicken oscillator is negative. Chicken money flow for some strange reason is getting stronger and volume is really dropping off. The vortex is still positive, but another day or so of downward movement and this is gonna cross back over negative. The summation index is declining based on price and volume. Our momentum oscillators, this is what I was talking about. The MACD is starting to roll over. Down at the bottom, the TSI, it probably, again, without any kind of significant upward movement, it will probably switch over positive. So this, all of these indicators could become mixed very soon. The BPI, it's holding up, believe it or not. It's not really dropping down with price because we were in this area not too long ago. So if we're setting new point and figure sell signals, they were already generated a while back. And so it's not generating a lot of new ones. Ease of movement is also declining. Ultimate oscillator declining. TTM squeeze, it's still advancing. Another one of these, it just seems to wanna go in a direction and not necessarily the same direction as price. Our different charts, the Heiken Ashi is looking more negative. The Kegi, it's still positive, but another day or so of downward movement, and this could re redraw with a red line. The Renko, this is what's interesting. It actually put in a new box with the upward movements that we saw. This is actually looking a little bit more positive, and that's kind of strange. We're not seeing that in other charts. Three-line break still remains positive. It has not redrawn yet. The Elder Impulse System for the SPX is back to neutral it switched yesterday and it remains um, not neutral it remains negative as with the spy it's also negative the sar it continues to hang in there with the dots underneath so that's positive again a little bit more downward movement and this could switch over negative the go no go system is switched back it switched yesterday to a deep purple and it remains that way Longer term charts, seeing a decline with the 50, 150, and 200 day moving averages. Special K, it's kind of flattening out right now. Looking at the broad market, the diamonds are back to negative. They switched yesterday and now they're also positive or negative today. And the Qs are also negative. The NASDAQ, this is interesting. You see how we came right up to the pivot point and that acted as resistance. And then we came back down. Here's the Vixen showing actually a little bit of a decrease in the Vixen on a closing basis and the bars getting a little bit wider. you got folks that they, they just don't know what to do because there's just a lot of weird things lining up right now. Here's the NASDAQ also. It came a little bit above the pivot, but we're still closing right below the pivot point right now. Then the dollar declined just a little bit but it's still in a really strong uptrend. Here's the S&P to the dollar, where they're kind of moving in the same direction, even though that relationship weakened slightly. Oil was up almost half a percent to 96.30. Just having it under 100 is kind of cool, but is it gonna stay under 100 or is it gonna pop right back up above it? Gold just continues to have problems, but even though it is having big problems and a death cross here, we were up almost half a percent with the ETF and we were up one and almost one and a half percent with the silver ETF. Looking at bonds, they bounced up a little bit, a little over a quarter of a, 
quarter of a percent with the world bond index. And looking at the S&P to the 10-year yield, kind of moving, just chopping around, not really telling us much right now. When these lines go really extreme to the top or really extreme to the bottom, that's really when they tell us something. But I like showing these every day just to show you how these relationships work on a day in and day out basis. Here's the tech sector to the 10 year yield also kind of bouncing around and going slightly in the same direction. We still have the 10 to the five yield curve is still negative. You can get a higher yield by getting a five year than you can with a 10 year. And here's the one that people really pay attention to the 10 to the two, it still continued and even dropped even more in today's session where it's also inverted. And then I just wanted to show you this, where we're seeing this really fall. Some people, including Edward Yardeni, this is the yield curve he looks at. And he wasn't really suggesting we would go into a recession as long as this stayed positive. Well, this is really starting to drop. And if it goes negative, that could be a little bit more confirmation that we might go into a recession. The 30-year yields kind of bouncing around 3% right now. And here, just showing how, man, this just looks like smash up derby or something right here, where everything's just, some are going up, some are going down. Shorter term are really spiking up with the longer term ones, most of them coming down. So crazy. Here's our possible positive scenarios. This is still holding up. When we take the entire market, the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE, look at a five period moving average of their highs and lows, after hitting an extreme negative reading, they're still coming back in this chart. Looking at the S&P, a 10-day average of their highs and lows, after getting extreme negative, we're still bouncing back up, even though we were higher and we're coming back down. We might go back down and make another extreme reading. We'll have to see how that goes. This is a shorter, this, this is the 200-day moving average where this extreme reading, almost extreme, is still bouncing up and giving us, it's, it's still holding up for right now. This is the shorter term one, 50 period moving average, getting extreme, bouncing up, but coming back down. And the same thing with the mid caps and the small caps. The five period moving average of the VIX after giving an extreme reading is still coming back down, but it now it, it was coming back down, but now it's starting to spike back up. The copy curve still generating a signal, but even it's starting to roll over. It's not really sure it likes what it sees. Or the Pring bottom fissure, it's still generating a signal, but the window could be starting to close with this. We had this generated quite a while ago, and look at how many bars have passed, and we're just not seeing any follow through price movement at this time. This is what's still holding up. The Qs turned back up slightly against the S&P. Discretionary turned back up and the growth, large cap against value, the growth against value, it is hanging in there above the moving average. And then here, comparing growth and value with the large caps, just kind of flat, turning back up slightly with the mid caps and also turning up slightly with the small caps. So this is what I wanted to stop and talk about for just a minute. You notice when we were seeing the negative divergence at the end of 2021, where the S&P was going up and we're seeing these sectors or these relationships really start to go down. Well, they didn't, the S&P didn't go straight up. It went up a little bit, then down, then back up, then down. And then finally, it ended up falling apart. So this movement that we're seeing here Maybe we should be a little more patient in that, where these this is the smart money. They've got almost unlimited funds available to them, so they can afford to wait it out if they're showing some losses. And they don't buy everything all at once. They're doing it incrementally, usually when they think that the rest of the market is not really paying attention, because that's when they can get away with it. So <clears throat> just because we're not bouncing right up now does not necessarily mean that this these signals are invalid. We just wanna keep watching this on a day-by-day -day basis. And then eventually we'll hopefully see some kind of a follow through with price or this signal will just break down to the point where we have to make it go away. Then looking at the two-year yield, 
yeah, it spiked up and then came back down, but now it's going back up again. And here's the correlation showing that the S&P in the two year, they were going in kind of the same direction, but now that looks to be reversing a little bit. Staples, we wanna watch this not only to see how staples are doing, but we're getting really near a death cross here. And this has been a sector that's really helped the market in 2020 and 2021. And it's been holding up in 2022, but now it's starting to break down. This could play into our sector rotation scenario that we might be seeing unfold. Then we're looking at this chart. Now we're starting to spike again with the staples. So are we gonna go and break up and make a higher high with this ratio? If so, then that'll take out both of these spikes. The one that we looked at for a long time and then the one that's more recent, if we go above this, then that will be our new spike to focus on. So what's our outlook then? The technicals, they're turning back negative. Things are just not happening based on price. Sentiment is negative and getting to extreme again. We do, this, that should be the CPI. I didn't change that. We've got the, C, the PPI, I'm sorry. That should be the PPI. I just love not being able to edit these videos. And all the different geopolitical events right now. The big one being inflation and interest rates and growth concerns. Any one of these other ones could come to the forefront at any time. So what are our scenarios? Yeah, we're kind of turning back a little bit more to down, but until the ADX actually goes above 20, I'm hesitant to change the color of this scenario for all the different reasons with recession and inflation and interest rates being the real focus right now. The technicals, they're going back negative. Again, that's really getting into the market going up, although there's still a real disbelief that it will go up. Our scenarios, yeah, we're seeing a little bit of improvement with the sector rotation right now. Not on our other scenarios, but we are with the sectors. And the technicals, really not much to choose from right now as far as positive things. You could go with the chicken money flow, which seems to go the opposite direction of whatever the way the market goes. But we wanna see uniformity. We wanna see a consensus of different signals. And then we're more into a sideways pattern now because the ADX is below 20 and the red line's on top, so it is negative. So our conclusion then, we're negative, 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 negative. Kind of the same old song and dance that we've been saying now for a while. So thank you. Have a wonderful Thursday. And I'll look to prepare the next video for Friday's session if there's a lot of changes in what happens.